Death on Highway 34 was nearly instant for Josh and Sherry Zander. The couple, married 35 years, had been riding their motorcycle home from Estes Park when they were hit by this wrong way car. The impact would leave a solitary boot on the roadway and take Rob Cole's two best friends. We rode motorcycles together almost weekly in the summer. In fact, Coles and his wife were riding just ahead that day when they noticed a car veering across the center lane. I had to swerve my motorcycle in order to miss the car hitting us. The car right behind me saw them coming, so he jerked the car as well to the right, and by the time he jerked out of the way, our friends never even saw the car coming. The wrong way driver, Gina Moreau, would later tell troopers she took her eyes off the road to check mirrors. But despite a marijuana pipe found in the car and two dead people, troopers never took her blood to test for drugs. I'm grateful for law enforcement. I believe in what they do, and I think almost always they get it right, but I feel like they got it wrong this time. It seems like there might have been some mistakes made that could have been avoided. Son Jeremy Zander and his sister Katie Byers are haunted by what they will never know, but strongly suspect. I think she would have tested positive for at least some kind of drug. That's because the day after the crash, a good Samaritan found a marijuana grinder under this green flatbed trailer where Jeannie Morrow sat after the crash, and a butane torch was found in the weeds. A Larimer County Sheriff's deputy collected the evidence, but when he called the Colorado State Patrol, he was told there was not a blood draw performed on the driver of the vehicle, and the evidence I collected would not be needed in their case. And the first witness on the scene comforting Jeannie Morrow was never asked an important question by troopers. She indicated that she smelled of uh, marijuana on a scale of 1 to 10. She rated it as an 8. Um, at the time when she was spoken to at the scene, she wasn't asked that question. Assistant Prosecutor Emily Humphrey says as a result, all she could charge were misdemeanors instead of felonies. So of course I would love to have a blood test. However, at that time, the State Patrol determined that they did not have probable cause to get a search warrant to obtain that blood drug. In this case, I would have expected it to happen. Dr. James Wilkerson is the Lerma County coroner. He points out Mora was taken to the McKee Medical Center right after the accident, the obvious place to do a blood draw. And in a cruel twist, he admits blood tests were done on the victims as part of the autopsies. We test every victim for alcohol and common drugs of abuse. What did you learn about the Xander couple? That they didn't have any alcohol or any drugs of abuse on board. Yet Morrow's possible drug use at the time of the crash remains a mystery. It certainly makes me wonder. I wish I knew. Major Tim Keaton oversees District 3 for the Colorado State Patrol which includes Highway 34 in Larimer County. And a marijuana pipe at the scene. Does that say, hey, maybe we should test her? She's just killed two people by veering into the wrong lane? I think it absolutely is reasonable suspicion to look for impairment, um, which we did. But Major Keaton tells the problem solvers his troopers didn't notice any physical signs of impairment from the driver, so they didn't seek a blood test. Do you think you can always tell signs of impairment? I think it depends on the level of training you have. Neither trooper who responded to the scene was a drug recognition expert. Were errors made, do you think? I think there probably were. Besides belatedly interviewing the woman who smelled marijuana, troopers took two months to notice this meth pipe in the car after enlarging their own photos. Unlike the marijuana pipe, which is legal, a meth or crack pipe might have given them probable cause for a blood test. Troopers never even asked Moro to perform a roadside sobriety test which also might have given them probable cause. If you veer into the wrong lane for five seconds and you kill two people and there's a pipe in the car, that's at least enough information to ask, isn't it? I can't answer what they, what they should or shouldn't have done. But listen to what the case prosecutor said at Gina Moreau's sentencing hearing. The trooper that responded to the hospital did not even ask her to take a blood test. We don't know why. It was not the State Patrol's best day. It's not their best work. We'll never know if Ginny was sober out here on the day of the crash, but it's worth noting after she pled guilty months later, she had to undergo a random drug test, and she failed the first one miserably. The state's legal marijuana limit for drivers is 5 nanograms per milliliter. Ginny tested at 1,120 nanograms, 224 times the state's legal limit. Information that only reminds the Xander children what they lost. I miss just being able to talk to them, but most of all, I miss the fact that my kids 
won't get to grow up knowing them. It doesn't help the Xander family, but I can tell you that I believe that the State Patrol has learned tremendous amounts from this particular case. So Jeannie, even you believe that State Patrol should have tested your blood? Absolutely. A small wooden cross sits next to Highway 34, where Sherry and Josh Sander were killed riding their motorcycle after a wrong way driver hit them head on. I felt so bad, like I shouldn't have got behind the wheel and ever got a driver's license. From the Larimer County Jail, 37-year-old Jeannie Morrow tells the problem solvers she had just obtained her driver's license in South Carolina before recently moving to Colorado. So just to be clear, Jeannie, if Colorado State Patrol had done a blood draw on you immediately after the crash, what would that blood have found? Very little pot. State troopers never tested Jeannie, even though a marijuana pipe was found in her car. Do you guys wish you'd done a blood draw on her? I don't think we had legal justification. Um, I wish we had known one way or the other, because I won't lie, I would love to know personally. Major Tim Keaton says troopers need probable cause to seek a blood draw. We had two seasoned officers that looked for impairment within the driver that caused the crash, the at-fault driver, and both of them did not identify any impairment. Though neither officer was a drug recognition expert or noticed what was found the next day. Jeannie admits removing a marijuana grinder and marijuana from the car before troopers showed up. As a matter of trying to hide it, it was not something that we were trying to do at all. Do you think that if you had told the trooper, here's some marijuana and a marijuana grinder I had, that he would have been more likely to perform a field sobriety test on you and want to get you blood tested? Anyway. So does the victim's son. I think any kind of accident resulting in a fatality, all parties involved should be tested. Jeannie Morrow maintains troopers had no reason to test her. I think they would have, you know, thought more if they'd have smelled it, you know. Um, well, it's interesting you say that. Did you know that there was a witness who sat next to you to try to comfort you, a good Samaritan who stopped, who said she did smell a strong odor of marijuana on your body that day? Oh, that's, that's impossible. That's impossible. But troopers don't think it's impossible. In fact, after they re-interviewed that witness two months later, the Colorado State Patrol came to the McKee Medical Center with a search warrant, hoping doctors had drawn blood. But it turns out Jeannie's injuries were so superficial, she never needed any blood work done. So there was no new evidence to give investigators. How much would you love to know what those blood results would have been? I think that's everyone's wish, and I think even the State Patrol now. Prosecutor Emily Humphrey says her office will now send its own investigators to deadly crash scenes, and State Patrol says it will make sure a drug recognition expert shows up at any fatality. I constantly wonder if we did miss something, certainly it would not have been a misdemeanor case. The Xander family believes that you were under the influence of marijuana. They're convinced that you got away with vehicular homicide because you were never tested. Are they right? No, that's, no, 